Greetings, George Parrott with you with CMM, Christ Mandate for Missions, live on delay from sunny Fort Mill, South Carolina. And we pray blessings, all spiritual blessings into you and yours. This is a really important video. I feel this is one of the most important ones that the Lord has given me to share in the last few years. And you can call it, uh, Why Give to the Poor? And we're going to look at biblical examples of why uh, God commands us, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, to give unto the poor. Jesus did not come to earth to take our money and give it to those who do not have. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And that's what we are created for also. The Son of God appeared for this very reason, to destroy what the devil has done. We read in 1 John 3 a. In Luke 12, 14, we read, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. Why do I say that? Well, here's why. Jesus answered the man who did not have, but had asked Jesus to take from his brother and give to him. Covetousness can be a problem in the poor and the rich alike. And Jesus warns us against that. Synonyms for covetousness are greed, greediness, materialism. I've been guilty of that in my own life, and I know many people have. And it could be in any country around the world. The Lord is no respecter of person. But this is something that we all must uh, ask the Lord for help. And he always gives help when we ask him. In Proverbs 23, 4, we read, Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. We know that the love of money is the root of all evil. But how do we balance being blessed by God? He wants us to be blessed. He says that we'll have life and have it abundantly. But then also, how do we stay humble and our eyes focused on the Lord? We read in uh, Jeremiah, Jerusalem was under siege, and Jeremiah prophesied in 6.13. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, Everyone is given to covetousness. Not some, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Covetousness or greed is a natural desire of our flesh. And we know that we're to die to our flesh daily, to pick up our cross, carry our own cross, and to follow Jesus and what he did. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. This can be a huge problem in the church today, particularly in the Western church, because Christians live in this world, and the world sees someone successful in the abundance in his or her possession. But we know God looks at the heart. He does not take the side of rulers nor favor the rich over the poor, for he created everyone, we see in Job 34:19. Whether we are wealthy or poor in Christ, all are the same. There is no difference between rich and poor. The Lord is no respecter of persons. We hear time and again. We know the word says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Giving to the poor is clearly a biblical instruction in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. From the beginning of the law of Moses until the coming of Jesus and even in our day. Deuteronomy 24, 19 says, When you gather your crops and fail to bring in some of the grain that you have cut, do not go back for it. It is to be left for the foreigners, orphans, and widows, so that the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. For some, this may be a harsh message, and I'm want to be clear right up front, this is not about uh, manipulation or control. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. In Matthew 25, 41 to 43, we see, Then he will say to those on his left, Away from me, you that are under God's curse. Away to the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, but you would not feed me. Thirsty, but you would not give me a drink. I was a stranger, but you would not welcome me in your homes. Naked, but you would not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you would not take care of me. 
Paul is one of the greatest apostles, but he was also one of the most successful at raising funds. In every church that Paul went into, he talked about funds given for the poor in Jerusalem. In every church that Paul went into. And there's so many scriptures that we can read in his epistles that refer to that, and I want to go over a few of those. 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 3. Now concerning what you wrote about the money to be raised to help God's people in Judea, you must do what I told the churches in Galatia to do. Every Sunday, each of you must put aside some money in proportion to what you have earned and save it up so that there will be no need to collect money when I come. After I come, I shall give letters of introduction to those you have approved and send them to take your gift to Jerusalem. And in the same way, this is what CMM is called to do. We have trusted friends, hundreds and hundreds of them around the world that I know personally. Many times I've been to their places, I've gotten to know them online and through email and through the decades, now over 20 years, have invested my, my time and uh, made sure that there's a high degree of stewardship, wisdom, of accountability in where the money that our precious, generous donors and partners sow into to help expand the kingdom of God and to bring the Great Commission to fulfillment in our day, doing all that we can. And CMM is known for giving 93, 94% of all the funds that come in to our friends in other countries who are expanding the kingdom of God and winning the loss to Jesus Christ and discipling them in the Father's heart with the love of Jesus flowing through them and all the seven spirits of God flourishing in their ministries. Let's look at Romans 15, 26. For the churches in Macedonia and Achaia have freely decided to give an offering to help the poor among God's people in Jerusalem. That decision was their own, but as a matter of fact, they have an obligation to help them. Since the Jews shared their spiritual blessings with the Gentiles, the Gentiles ought to use their material blessings to help the Jews. So another way to look at CMM is we were just a conduit or a vehicle. You're not giving to us, you're giving to the poor through us for the glory of the Lord. The Bible says that they raised funds for the poor in the Old Testament and the New Testament with Jew and Gentile alike. Now we read in Romans 15, 27, the Jews shared their spiritual blessings with the Gentiles. The Gentiles ought to use their material blessings to help the Jews. We love Israel, God's chosen land and his people. We are grafted in the vine and the branches. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. And we have a, a solemn covenant that the Lord first loved us and he gives us his covenant to expand what his heart is so full of love. Another reason could be a severe famine was about to come over all the earth. We read in Acts 11, 28. All the earth in the original Greek translation is the Roman Empire. That was the known world at that time. Paul did not collect from rich churches to give to poor churches. He collected from rich and poor churches alike to give to the poor in Jerusalem. There were churches in Macedonia that were living in extreme poverty, and they urgently pleaded with Paul for the privilege of sharing in this ministry, as we read in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 4. Even during times of great persecution that left many people poor in the church in Jerusalem, and Paul felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to help the victims. Acts 8, 1, we read, and at the time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. There's increasing persecution going on around the world. And I know personally, many of our dear missionaries, ordained pastors with CMM, who are risking their lives. They're also living by faith, trusting God for feeding their families as they, uh, again, risk their lives to share the good news with an unsaved person who doesn't know about the goodness of God. 
And it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And many millions are waiting to hear the good news. And it's exciting that we can partner together all with different uh, functions and duties and roles in the body of Christ with Jesus Christ as our head to work together to see the gospel go to the ends of the earth being preached to all nations and disciples of all nations being made in our day. We have the capability to do that. And even during these times of the coronavirus uh, spreading and increasing, our trusted embedded missionaries who are many of them are indigenous to their own countries or called to other lands, they are already in place and we can still continue to send them funds, to communicate with them, to follow up, to help hold them accountable, to ensure that there's wise stewardship being taken place. And this is one of our favorite scriptures. We have it even on our um, envelope with CMM that says, um, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Paul's heart was pure, and he did not desire money from anyone, but he knew that when a church gave a financial offering to the poor, that there was a fruit that may abound to their account. What is this fruit that Paul was talking about? That fruit can be both financial and spiritual blessings to the church in the here and now, as well as in eternity. When we give to the poor and when we give as unto the Lord, we are uh, sending those funds into the heavenly spiritual realm where we know that neither moth nor rust can destroy. It's the best return on our investment of the funds that the Lord entrusts to us. Look at the fruit of Cornelius and his household in Acts chapter 10, verse 1 through 6. At that time, there was a Roman military officer, Cornelius, who was in charge of 100 men stationed in Caesarea. He was the captain of the Italian regiment, a devout man of extraordinary character who worshiped God and prayed regularly together with all of his family. He also had a heart for the poor and gave generously to help them. Now listen to this, verse three. One afternoon about three o'clock, he had an open vision and saw the angel of God appear right in front of him, calling out his name, Cornelius, Cornelius. Startled, he was overcome with fear by the sight of the angel. He asked, what do you want, Lord? The angel said, all of your prayers and your generosity to the poor have ascended before God as an eternal offering. Do you feel that? Now send some men to Joppa at once. Have them find a man named Simon, or Peter, the rock, who is staying as a guest at the home of Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. Do you want to hear those words? God sees your gifts to the poor and hears your every prayer and your requests that are about to be answered. Read what the wisest man on the earth said in Proverbs 21, 13. This is Solomon. Whoever closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself call out and not be answered. Cornelius' prayers were heard and they were answered. The Holy Spirit led Peter to the house of Cornelius and at his arrival he found a large crowd ready to hear the message. Peter was preaching to them the gospel and while he was still speaking those words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. And that you can look up later in Acts 10, 44. An outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the gathering of the people occurred when we can see two important truths here, prayer and gifts to the poor. Paul's heart was for the spiritual well-being of the church. He did not use ever manipulation or control to get money out of anyone or any church. And we're certainly not doing that here. We're just asking you to pray and look at what the living word says. When he asked for money for the poor in the churches, he made sure that the people were giving in freedom. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7, we're told, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. No one likes to be 
uh, twisted or coerced or pressured. But whenever you give an offering in any place, is ask the Lord what he desires for you to give. There are three important keys in this verse that we can look at. Firstly, it is a decision made in one's heart when giving to the poor because God looks at the heart. Paul said not to do it reluctantly or half-heartedly. Secondly, do not give under compulsion or pressure. It must be a free will offering. Now we believe that the tithe belongs to the local church or congregation or home group that you're part of. And any giving to CMM, some people do decide to tithe to CMM, but again, that's between them and the Lord. So most of our gifts are free will offerings that people pray and ask the Lord and they make a commitment to give every month or they give one time gift. It's totally between them and the Lord and we are so thankful of how God multiplies even the smallest gifts. I remember for years we had a very faithful lady in Quincy, Illinois who gave five dollars every month faithfully. She's gone on to be with the Lord but it reminded me all the time about it just like the the widow in the Bible and Jesus was watching the people come and give the offerings the widow who gave two mites or two pennies and she gave more than all the others and so it's not the size of the gift but it's out of the the sacrifice of giving and the thanksgiving to the Lord in Exodus 15 1 2 we read and the Lord said to Moses speak to the Israelites that they take for me an offering from every man who gives it willingly and ungrudgingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. That's the Lord speaking to Moses. Again, God loves a cheerful giver. In the natural flesh, it's not cheerful to give money away, but in the spirit it is. And we're all called to live that spirit-led life, to let the Holy Spirit lead us, which often goes contrary to our natural mind or carnal thoughts or habits that we're raised with uh, here on earth. Paul knew that it was our Father's heart to care for the poor, but also a faith act of thanksgiving to the Lord. 2 Corinthians 9.12 we read, For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So when we sow into missionaries or trusted ordained CMM pastors, we're giving thanksgiving to the Lord along with administration for the service of the work of God's people. It is more than just saying thank you with one's lips. It is an act by faith to say thank you to God for all his blessings. It is abundant and it's, it's just a, a way of saying thank you God for who you are, for how much you love us that no matter what I give, and even if it's a, um, two mites, or two pennies, Lord, I give as unto you. And it's an expression of my thankful heart for you, God. The Good News Bible says, but also produces an outpouring of gratitude to God. We all want to see answered prayers, right? We all want that. We love that. And we thank God for all the answered prayers that you and I have seen in our lives. And we want to see his Holy Spirit poured out in the lives of of you and us and our families and our global family of faithful CMM missionaries and ordained pastors, both in America and around the world in many nations, 70 nations we have trusted people that we have accounts set up for to receive funds in all different areas going into um, anti-Christian, threatening, and dangerous environments to share the good news, to win souls to Jesus, working with refugees in the Middle East and closed countries in the 1040 window. And it's an exciting time to hear such great testimonies coming in of how many souls are coming to the kingdom and being put on the path of life for all eternity. The motive for giving is not to get something, but it's to say thank you for all God's blessings in each of our lives. The benefit of sowing generously is reaping generously. For it says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. I love how simple the Bible is, that even 
I can understand it and take it to heart. And we're praying for transformation in our own lives as uh, the Lord renews our mind day by day as we hunger and thirst for more of Him. And remember, God doesn't need our money. He already owns everything. He wants our hearts and looks upon our own heart. And He knows the condition of our heart. He pulls us into more intimacy with Him and He wants us to be obedient. We read in uh, Hebrews 11:6, without faith, it's impossible to please God for he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We cannot make God love us more and he refuses to love us any less, no matter what. We're so blessed we can't lose and we win. In every trial, every overcoming situation and circumstance, as we trust in the Lord and we look to him to see what he sees, and stand on his word and his covenant promises, we will see breakthroughs. Jesus said, when I return to earth, will I find faith? And yes, he will find faith. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us on the cross. God provided for millions of Israelites and for 40 years in the desert. Can he provide for us? And he provided bread and fish for thousands. One of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. It's not biblical for anyone to pray to God for him to convict another person in giving money or use manipulation ever to ask for anything. The word says that manipulation is as the sin of witchcraft. The answer is to build relationships with people. And we, we want to get a closer relationship with you um, as the Lord leads and provides a way for us to connect. Let us know how we can pray for you and your family. And we do that with our missionaries and their families and ordained ministers of CMM here and in many countries around the world is build lifelong, eternal relationships, really, of the family of God, loving, respecting, honoring each other, listening to each other. And our heart, as you hear me say often, is like the Apostle Paul, to see everyone in complete in Christ. The answer is to build these relationships and friendships with people and churches with whom God connects us. Psalm 121, verse 1 through 3 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills around Jerusalem to sacred Mount Zion and Mount Moriah. From whence shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You will not allow your foot to slip or to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. At the same time, we as believers cannot look away when disaster strikes in a city or a distant land, especially when those suffering are people that we know. It, it's like our, our family, our biblical family around the world. One of my responsibilities with CMM is to go and visit our friends and members of CMM in the fields in many nations while also inspecting the generous, faithful giving of our partners and investors in global futures in the lives of God, of those God connects us with. We also measure accountability and responsible usage of the funds that you or others have given and faithfully sow into the kingdom as giving unto the Lord. Stewardship is vital. And oftentimes we've heard it said, stewardship is everything. How we steward our time, how we steward our thoughts, how we steward what comes out of our mouth, the words spoken by our tongue, and also stewardship of our resources that the Lord entrusts to us. And so it's so important for us to walk in the integrity and the character of Jesus Christ. And that's one of the many things that we do at CMM of sowing in to nations, discipling the saints, discipling nations, and also stewardship, uh, inspection, and accountability with the funds that you faithfully sow into. And, and we carry that responsibility really as a sacred covenant that you're trusting us to deliver the funds that you worked so hard for to the destination or the person or the project that you've given it to. As persecution increases globally, CMM has many dear friends and missionaries or global family that truly risk their lives for the cause of Christ. I know many of these brothers and sisters in many nations around the world as the persecution is spreading and increasing and the darkness is increasing, but 
The word says in Isaiah 60, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory shall shine brighter and brighter in the days ahead. And we are seeing that in the midst of the chaos and the plagues and the darkness and the great shaking and the wars and rumors of war. We know the end of the book, but we know we're called to boldness and faith and a laid down life, aligning ourselves and joining ourselves, joining CMM with what the Lord is doing in the nations of the earth. Last scripture I want to share is from Hebrews 13, 3. Remember, remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. When one suffers in the body, we all suffer. And Jesus' last unanswered prayer in John 17 was that we would be one as he and the Father are one. That day is coming. And by faith, we can see it now that the body around the world is connected. And when one, one rejoices, the others can rejoice. And when one is suffering, the others are suffering. Let us grow in our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and grow in sensitivity to what is going on in the body of Christ, in the different ethnos, in the people groups around the world. Not only remember them in their prayers as those that are imprisoned as we would be with them, but Paul the Apostle showed us to take action by sending financial gifts to them as well. Every Christian's heart desires must be to walk closely with Jesus and to be led by the Holy Spirit. And you can read more of that in Romans 8, 4. So I pray all spiritual blessings upon you and your household and you watch this video perhaps more than once and take note of the scriptures. It's not me saying it. This is what the Word of God says about giving unto the poor, whether it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament or the end times that we are in of the blessings that come from giving to the poor. You're not giving to, to me or to us or to CMM. You're giving as unto the Lord. You're giving to the poor in many nations where some of these people might make 50 to 200, maybe $500 a year. Some of us do that in, in a day or a week or a month. We are all living by faith, but let's remember the body and how God's heart is for us to be one as Jesus and the Father are one. So God bless you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your prayers for our precious global family serving with Christ's mandate for missions on the front lines of God's vineyard. Bless you and we'll see you soon.